The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. By tomorrow, I will rule the world! You think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? Well, I must have not been paying attention. There we are. Do you think that you could repeat the question? And I listen more attentively. There must have been something in all of that nothing that wasn't quite so easy to see. And I must have missed something when you were just talking to me. I must have not been paying attention. Says I've got the right one, but I'm not saying it. I'm on the wrong Wi-Fi. I don't know who TB Guest is, but somehow it just automatically signed up there. Oh, me neither. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Gonna get Matt to do the Papa Buzz? If he knows where they are, which is right now. Ba, 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 ba. No, did not no, know. Didn't. No, no, that's all right. We know who so watches you know, he, the no. show. <laughs> yeah. <you know>. Right? <laughs> All right, let's get this show on the road, shall we? All right, we? let's do it. You can take down that Great Alliance Tech ad for next week, too. Hi, how you guys doing? My name's Tom Duggan here at the Paying Attention Podcast. Hi, at top two guys smoke shop at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. There's an awful lot of stuff going on in the world. There's an awful lot of stuff going on in the country. There's certainly an awful lot of stuff going on in the Merrimack Valley. But I wanted to take a show today. We've been promising to do it for the last four or five weeks uh, to talk to Matt McLennan at Century 21 um, uh, McLennan and Company Real Estate from Methuen because he comes on periodically to talk about home prices and real estate prices and what's going on in the market. And the last time we had him here, we asked him if, you know, if there was going to be a crash, if there was going to be a burst in the bubble, what he thought. And a lot of things have changed since then. And I thought, you know, let's get him back in here to do some kind of an update. Before I do, I just want to talk about a couple of real quick things. Um, I want to say hi to Megan at... Uh, at Daybreak Shelter in Lawrence. I met her last night. And, you know, it's not often that I meet someone and I immediately say, friends for life. But she came over to my car last night at TMF and she said, I was at your bash this year. And I went, oh, my God, friends for life. Just like with Matt, friends (laughs) for life. Because anybody who comes to our event, we do this once a year, anyone who comes and contributes to what we do for the scholarships, for the veterans that we honor and all that, to me, that's like you, you joined the family. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what you do after that. If you ever need anything, you call me and I'll be happy to help you out. Um, so I want to say hi to her and everybody over at Daybreak. Um, I also want to just touch on the Supreme Court ruled this morning on a, on a case. And what's sad is that I turned on CNN first. And they spent the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes talking about how horrible this ruling was without ever actually telling anybody what the ruling actually said. So for those of you who are watching mainstream, uh, in fact, Fox did the same thing. I put on Fox and I watched Fox, and they all said what a great thing the ruling was, but didn't really talk about the actual ruling. So in, just in a quick nutshell, here's what the Supreme Court said today. In New York, they have a, uh, a law that you can conceal carry a weapon. You can, you, can, you can carry a gun for self-protection out in public if you give them a specific reason, and the state gets to decide if that reason's okay or not. So, like, say you work on a Brinks truck or say you work at a, in a jewelry store in, in a bad neighborhood in New York, you might need a gun for self-protection because maybe you're carrying valuables to work. The state might say, yeah, that's okay, but they also might say, no, that's not good enough. And the Supreme Court said, no, New York can't do that. States can't do that. You have to have one objective standard. The, the, the Second Amendment right to carry a weapon for self-defense is a constitutional right, and you cannot water it down. That's what they said. 
Now, this isn't going to apply to most states. I think 39 states don't have this. Massachusetts doesn't have this. Uh, but New York and some of the other very liberal, New York, California, and uh, I think Illinois might have this. They're going to have to redo their laws and say, no, we're either going to let people conceal carry on an objective standard or we're not. And then, you know, if they say no, that's going to have to go back to the Supreme Court and they'll get smacked again. But I just wanted to explain that for people because it's, it's always infuriating to me. I'm in the news business and I want to learn something. And when someone comes on and says the Supreme Court ruled, uh, you know, gave a ruling today, and then don't tell you what the actual ruling is, but then opine for 20 minutes on whether it's good or bad, they're really indoctrinating. They're not educating. And I just want to educate my audience as to what it actually said. Sitting in the studio with me is a guy that, uh, that I've known for quite a while now. I'm really happy to have met him. He's been at our bash, so again, friends for life. Um, Matt McLennan from Century 21 McLennan and Company. And you've been on the show now, I think, maybe five or six times to talk about like real estate stuff. And I kept trying to trip you up. I kept saying, are you sure there's not going to be a burst? Well, we know that like the economy is getting worse. And, and you've been pretty good. Like all, I go back like three or four weeks after you come on the show. And I watch what you said. Then I go to like the Wall Street Journal and see if what you said was real. And it's always been was, real. Was I, was I winging it's it? Or did no, I, do, always, do I know this stuff? It's yeah. always been 100%. So I said, this is a guy that's... He's, a, he's a, a, a real expert in real estate, as everyone at McLennan is, because your company has been in business doing this since I graduated high school in 1985. Do I have that right? Yeah. yeah. So I remembered that from the last time yeah. you were on the show. Yeah. So, you know, you, there's a lot of real estate people out there. Maybe they just got their license or, you know, maybe they're, not, they're, maybe they're new to the area. You want someone that's got a proven track record, someone that knows their stuff. And someone that like lives and breathes this stuff and doesn't do this part time. This is your full time job. This is right. the only thing I've ever done right, from the right. day out of college. This, this is what I've done. I, I think I'm about 32 <clears throat> years in. Um, yeah, the company's 37 years old. Crazy. And yeah, so we've been around through all market conditions. We've mm. been in interest rates being 15, 17 percent. We've been coming out of crashes and. You, know, well, you started in 85, and I think the real estate market crashed in, like, what, 89, 90? I think, yeah. That, so that's you what, were just renewing business when all the bad stuff happened, and that, you survived it. That was all Janet. That was my mom's Janet McLennan, and so she started with Reggie Moriarty. And, yeah, so they, they rode through that wave, and I got out of college in 92, mm -hmm. and that was sort of a nice growth era. And, uh, yeah, so we've kind of seen it all. We, we've... Uh, you know, grown and expanded, but we've had, I think what makes us special, we have a lot of people that have been associated with our brokerage for 15, 20, 25, mm. 30 years. Yeah, longevity is important when, you buy, when yeah. you're going to buy a house or you're going to sell your house, you want someone that really knows their stuff. You don't yeah. want someone who just got their real estate license like two years ago and they're still trying to figure it out, you know? Well, I mean, even the new people, if they have a, if, if, they are, if they're tethered to veterans that they're all part of the same process. A good then, team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, yeah. you can be new, but you have to be part of it. Now, were you always on Broadway in that location in, in Methuen, or did you yeah. start somewhere else? Now? So you've always been there. We've always been Broadway, Methuen. We've, we're still in Bradford. We've been in Bradford probably 20 years. And, you know, in the, through the 2000s and the, the 90s, we'd expanded. We'd, we'd had a huge office in Lawrence, and we've been in New Hampshire. And so it's, you know, we, you get more efficient and more efficient. You figure out how to do things with a little less brick and mortar, and as long as you have strong ad, you know, my administrate, my admin Brenda has been with us about 30 years. Uh, a fabulous story. When the company um, opened up, my mom uh, hired this guy, Louis Vieira, to install our signs, and he was fresh here from the Azores, and we just met, I just sat with him two days ago. Didn't, had no connections here, didn't really know the language, didn't know what he was going to do. He became our sign guy, and he just gave us our notice that he's retiring again after 37 years. Wow. Always been with us, but he's also picked up many of the larger companies in the area. Mm -hmm. Like, this guy has grown a sign installation empire. So, sad to see him leave, but, you know, there's, you, you know, you become part of the family. Right, and right. it's not just real estate agents, it's not just admin. There's a lot of other people. I got a guy. That you got a guy? Actually, it's a girl. All right. Dawn Pease over at Dawn Sign Tech in North Andover is wonderful. She no, does. No, so she all, she makes great signs. Yeah. I need someone to physically go dig holes and put them. signs in oh, and I take see. them out. I exactly. see. I see. What you're I know Dawn. Dawn right. does great stuff. Dawn yeah. is fantastic. So with everything going on now, the economy is clearly slowing down. The inflation is going crazy. 
the Fed raised interest rates, which is going to obviously affect mortgages and how much you're paying and how much you have to put down. Uh, where, where do you see, the last time I talked to you, I asked if it was going to slow down a little bit. You said it might slow down a little bit, but you don't see a burst coming. Do you still feel that way? I do. Okay. So we're, we're definitely feeling the slowdown effects. Mm-hmm. But by saying slow down, that's in comparison to insanity right. that we saw for two years. Mm-hmm. So if you look at what it's like now to what it was like three years ago, it's a nice regular market, good activity. The sellers still have the upper hand, um, but you're seeing a, a little softening in the whole process. And so pricing is holding. It's holding its ground. There's a number of factors that are uh, playing into that. So no one needs to freak out that uh, the, the sky is falling or the market is crashing. This, you know, I think we're in a fabulous location where we are north of the city between the highway access, 95, 93, 495. And then I think you see a real shift of how many people went from living a commuting to the city five days a week to the, the adjustment to working remotely and being able to live a little further away. Prices have only gotten stronger and stronger and stronger as you get south of our area. South of our area, you're looking at more expensive homes that are on much smaller lots. And so we have such an influx of people heading north, checking out what we have to offer. And I say our marketplace is all of Merrimack Valley, all of Greater Lawrence. And I would kind of look at it into New Hampshire, up to Manchester, um, the coastal area. You know, we do cover all of New Hampshire, but I would say we do a lot up to New Hampshire mm-hmm. and then down to Boston. So... I think there's, there's still so many more buyers than sellers. Now, interest rates. Certainly, so today the interest rate is 5.825. It was in the sixes last week, so it ticked down a little. So what has that done? So this, buying the same house, getting a mortgage of $500,000. Today, your principal and interest, your payment is about $2,900. A year ago, that was $2,100 if it was 3%. And then those same numbers, qualifying. To borrow $500,000 today, you probably need about $100,000 in income. Last year, about $75,000 in income. So that has made a big impact, certainly in the first-time buyers, those younger buyers. Uh, A number of them have sort of been boxed out of the market. But there is still enough buyers that are there that that's say, not necessarily a bad thing though right because you're 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 limiting you're limiting the 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 number of people who may not be able to pay that mortgage five years from now from getting into that situation absolutely. so another thing when people are fearing a crash when you look at the last crash of 08 09 in that era you could BS your way into a mortgage with either stated income or there was a lot of loosey-goosey programs. Mm -hmm. What I've seen the last two years, there'd be so many offers on a property that a seller and a good broker is going to really just focus on maybe the top 25% who's really in the running to get this deal. And those buyers are putting 20, 30, 40% down. Those are A-plus cream puff buyers so that's who bought the homes. So if prices were to fluctuate, I don't think we're going to see a wave of foreclosures because so the FHA 3.5% down buyer who was incredibly common through all of my career. What is FHA? FHA is a government program, um, f- federal housing authority okay. mortgage, which is super common, which allows – a first-time buyer to put less money down. It's the smallest down payment aside from a VA mortgage. Okay. So you can put 3.5% down. You could probably get away with a little uh, rougher credit score. Um, income guidelines may be a little easier. So it, it's usually the best deal for the young people. And But they've been knocked out of the market by people that are just more qualified with larger down payments getting conventional loans. We're just now seeing maybe those FHA deals are coming back on the table. So a, a seller, maybe they were getting 20, 30, 40 offers on the table. Maybe now they're getting five offers, 10 offers on the table. And some of those may be an FHA buyer. And maybe 
the best deal maybe that FHA loan. So they were gone. Those are not coming back. They, they, the loan's always been around, but those buyers have been knocked out by higher qualified buyers. And that means that the people who are buying the homes are much more qualified financially to be able to handle it if there is a downtick in the market, if the market does even just crash a little bit and, and prices go up. I always feel bad for the people that spend an awful lot of money buying a house and then like three years later... The real estate market crashes, their interest rates go up, and they've got these balloon payments, and all of a sudden, they're homeless because they can't afford the mortgage anymore. Sure, sure. So in this growth we've been through, because interest rates have been so low, you, you didn't see people getting adjustable rate mortgages. You didn't see balloon payments. So that was another factor that happened maybe 20 years ago. That was certainly 10 and 20 years ago. That was certainly scary. But now, with interest rates hitting six, maybe we'll float around in the sixes, may get to seven. Mm. Would someone consider an adjustable rate mortgage again? Maybe. Ma- mm. Maybe if you know your lifestyle is, I'm probably here four, five, six, seven years, and I'm probably likely out of here because of work relocations, things like that. Yeah, that people may start doing those adjustable rates again. Now, I was watching um, Fox Business, which I normally don't do because I'm not really a Fox Business kind of guy, but I was nothing else on, so I just kind of put it on for background. And they were having a big discussion about hedge funds, buying up all this property, all this uh, uh, real estate, uh, housing, not you know business real estate, but buying all this, and, and artificially inflating the market and pricing people out. Is, is there any truth to that? And if there is, what is the effect on the market? Well, I mean, certainly... The, a, a thing that's going to help the home values is the rental market is still through the roof. So if rents are really high, that is still going to encourage people to want to purchase homes. Right. So I think a lot of the money out there um, has been scooping up and paying through the nose, outbidding everyone to buy these bigger multifamilies. And th- you know that is only going to drive rents up and up right. in all of the in all of these towns. So my, my rent went up. I paid out two thousand dollars a month. That's my rent. That's a mortgage. That's. But I can't buy a house because my my personal income is so low because everything that I do goes back into my paper because I'm I'm a owner occupy I'm an owner uh, of a business. Um, so I could never afford it. But what I'm paying now is is a mortgage. I'm paying two thousand a month for rent. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, you're seeing that. I mean, everything in Lawrence right now. Rents super high. Oh, Property values super high. Multifamilies in Lawrence can easily sell for more than their Methuen and Haverhill counterparts right now. Mm-hmm. Um, all the single fam- I, I love the Lawrence market. That's one of my favorite markets. And it's just great to see the single families there are through the roof in mm-hmm. all neighborhoods. So that's uh, we got to partner you up with Estella Reyes. She's the city council in Lawrence. She's she's in, she does real estate. I didn't know that until yep. she came on and I asked her. Uh, I never knew what she did for work. Um, and I'd love to see her working with someone like you guys because sure. um, she's fantastic. So what do, you, what do you see projecting out? Like a year from now when we're sitting here and we're talking about the economy, I mean, it's hard to know what's going to happen, right? But we can see the projection of where it's going. It looks like we're heading toward recession. It looks like there's going to be a really big slowdown at some point before things get a little bit better. What do you see? So, you know, if, if the more um, inflation kicks in, that will tick the rates up. If rates can stay six, cap at seven, that's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. We, we've, we've all lived through life when the norm was 5%, 6%, 7%, and we were happy. Right. And you could figure it out and you could make it work. So that's, the sky's not falling if that's the case. Uh, I think prices this time next year will really be kind of flatlined with where they are right now. So in two years for our area, Likely, the, all of the homes increased about 35%, which is huge. So yeah. North Andover, I mean, you're talking a 650 really became a 900. Right. And the, you know, the, average, <laughs> the average sales price for a single family in North Andover is in around the low 900 right now, and Andover's over a million. Wow. And, and that's nuts. And, yeah. the, and those markets are still going strong. Now, in North Andover, we're building these monstrosities. Um, our, our good friend Phil DeCollegio voted for all that stuff and then left. He left North Andover after he priced himself out. Yep. Thanks, Phil. Um, I see these big, huge monstrosities going in behind um, China Blossom, China Blossom the, the, the one on 125 uh, across from the flower shop, that big, humongous, I mean, it's a whole village that they're yeah. putting in. Um, <clears throat> what does that do to the home prices? What does that do to the real estate and the, and the 
rental prices, does that bring it down because now you've got more housing? Or does that inflate it because now you've got you know, more real estate taxes and they just keep going up? I mean, that stuff's all going to just inflate it because all of that new stuff is going to be shiny and new and beautiful and they're going to be easy to rent. And I think it'll just be more millennials will want to live in something like that. Right. But those are 2,500. Those are going to be 3,000. Right. Um, I, I, I hate to make the joke because I live in that neck of the woods, but, I mean, China Blossom looks like a hotel lobby for a big Vegas hotel right. now. Right, that's us. <laughs> that's grown up behind it. Yeah. You're like, geez. Yeah. But it's, you know, I think that's all uh, senior housing back there, and right. if that's a good place. Which is good for me because I just turned 55, so I actually qualify yeah. now. Senior housing is <clears throat> not 70 and 80-year-olds. Right, so uh, not anymore anyway. Yeah. You know, I felt really good when I turned 50, I, 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 everybody's telling me you're going to feel like, you know, really ho- old and horrible on your 50th birthday. And I was doing great. I was like, you know, I, I still feel like I'm 30, so whatever. Until I went to the post office to get my mail. And there was a friggin' AARP card on my birthday, on my 50th birthday. Sure. And I've been depressed ever since. I'm 55. For, for the last five years, I've been depressed about yeah. that. Because now I'm 55, and now they're actually calling me on the phone trying to solicit me. And I'm like, look, I'm not old yet, okay? Now, now Back off. Now they're selling you things that you're actually like, oh, I could you actually well, right, use that. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, yeah. It's not a bad. extra insurance, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, what, is it that, what is it that you see as far as people coming into the market? Are they going to be able to stay and, st- and sustain being in the market, being in the homeowner's market, like people who are first time, they're going out there buying maybe a two-family with a little bit of income, uh, or, or do you see that slowing down? I think there's still a, a, a big surplus of buyers. Even, even if we lose 25% of them, 30% of them because of the rates, there's still more buyers than sellers. There's a housing shortage. There's a new construction shortage. You know, there's... It, uh, you know, the availability of good land. You know, you may see something that say here's 20 acres of swampy woods. That's right. not good land, but really nice land. I think it's very difficult for developers to say, can I really predict and price out between supply chain issues and timelines to say, how do you commit to make a product that you know was going to be profitable and that isn't... So when people say, well, why can't they build homes for 650 they can't. Look at the wood costs. They I mean, can't. Just the cost of lumber alone. So if, if, if you can get a half-acre lot and put a, people say McMansion, but right. that then sells for a million dollars, that's the only way that developer is going to say, I'm going to take the risk because I at least know I'm going to walk away with X dollars per right. house. And it's, it's tough. It, and so the people that are being priced out, you know, when, when, you, when you get someone to say, I kind of want to spend 250 I want to spend 300 there's not a lot of options. I mean, right. Maybe there's some condos in our Methuen, Lawrence, Haverhill, neck of the woods that, you know, maybe they're 250 maybe they're 300 but they're made, the lower you go in that price point, they start to become difficult to finance. So then they become, oh, the cheap ones have to be cash buyer. Well, that doesn't help anybody. Right. So what do you do? You say, well, let's look a little further north. Let's look a little further north. Right. You know, you, you hit Derry, and Derry has tons of duplexes. And Well, they the, just built this whole Tuscan Village thing up here with, like, what, are they, 84 billion units that they just put in? Yeah. What does that do to the re- local real estate market? You know, it's, I mean, they're, they're easy to sell, and they're, they're easy to rent. So all of that new stuff that's added, like, you know, when they're, they're building the more apartments, they're shiny and new. The owners or the landlords can charge a premium, so that just pushes more and more higher price stuff, and that's always just going to pull. What's it going to take to bring the prices down? What's it going to take so that people's rents aren't, uh, aren't exorbitant and they're not worried about being like homeless next week? You know, I think the pricing in our area has taken a shift. When you look at Older cities, the Malden, the Medfords, the Somervilles that used to be like, oh, who would want to buy a three-family in Somerville? Well, right. Can you imagine inheriting a three-family in Somerville right now? <laughs> You'd be like, this is the greatest thing ever. Right. Um, An easy street. I, I kind of look at our area has just sort of taken that seismic shift. And you say, okay, to be in this neck of the woods, unfortunately, it is $2,500. And now... Maybe we start spreading a little west, a little north. In you what, know. Where's the best area? Because you cover the whole 
Merrimack Valley all the way up. If someone's looking to buy a house right now, maybe for, not to live, but for like investment, where do you recommend that they buy? Is it Lawrence? Um, well, I mean, I think Lawrence is awesome, but there's a lot of people that know Lawrence is awesome, and you're going to... You're going to be fighting with them. You're going to be fighting with them. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think there's... I don't think it's easy to get a, a deal or a steal in Lawrence. I think Haverhill is a fascinating market that you can get. I, th- I think some markets have a mix of big time real estate brokerage and some maybe smaller old school brokerages. And sometimes you can sort of just get something that comes on. You go, here's a two family. Maybe it needs some paint. Maybe it needs updating. But it's 500 grand in a not that bad area. Right. I think you can find those in Haverhill. I think Methuen, I just had a beautiful one that just kind of sat for a month, and we had to reduce the price. And it, I mean, this was... You must have been scratching your head because everything else goes in a day, right? That, like a whole month this has been sitting here. Everything had been going in a day. Oh, so okay. that's really, I think, the difference of March to now. And this, this is the biggest thing of the takeaway from what's the market like today. If you own a home... Um, the biggest issue is the importance of pricing. For two years prior, we were able to say, okay, if the last thing like this sold for seven, I bet you if we asked seven fifteen, we're still gonna get offers over that. So it was a creep, a creep, a creep. And now you could still get the same sales prices, but the smartest thing to do is really think to where the number you want to land is. And I was talking with an Andover broker uh, about a week ago. She had this great line. It was just like, you can't price to where you want to land. You need to, so if you're in a $900,000 price point, you want to back that back about $100,000, which is scary for sellers to say, just trust me. Like, let's ask eight to get nine. Because if you ask 915, we'll get nothing. We'll hear crickets chirp. And then if you kind of say, well, now we've reduced it to 875, that's where it gets weird. We say, if we asked eight, we would have got nine. Right. But now we're at 875, and we may get 860. And you kind of go, so understanding that with pricing, we, we just put one recently together this week. We're just talking in the office. And it was that kind of scenario. Now, and that's a good thing with our company where we're big enough and experienced enough that this. A lot of times there's no more magic than just going back to the office and sitting around and say, hey, Janet, what do you think of this property and this address with these updates? And what would you price that? What would you price it at? And you, you talk strategy. And now we're all really on board with a be careful. Be careful with the price. And we had something that we smartly priced it at X, and it went probably $90,000 over X. And we really sat there and said, gee, if you asked – you know, instead of six, if you ask six thirty, you wouldn't have hit that high number. Right. So that's super important. That's that's the biggest factor right now. Another thing with sellers, I think what condition wise, what you could have gotten away with last year and the year before, like maybe we're not touching up the paint, maybe the carpets are a little funky, but don't worry. Everyone's waving home inspections and everyone's just gonna make an offer anyway. I think right now, it's getting back a little to you're asking a premium for your house. You got to make a little effort to make it a premium product right now. If you want to sell your house, if you're looking to make some money, do you wait now? Like you see everything's kind of slowing down and you're talking about the prices are kind of, of flatlining. Do you wait or do you jump on this now before things crash? I would not wait. I don't think things are going to crash, okay, right. but I think you're in a position. I used the wrong word. I yeah. I think there's more risk of does, if, if I'm the buyer, if I'm the seller, am I more afraid of what is inflation just going to do to me in general? Like how, how much is gas cost and just everything cost going to eat away at where, where, where am I going on point B? Right. So it, a big factor is I'm going to sell in North Andover, but where are you going to buy? Right. And that's, you know, it's easy to sell. It's not that easy to buy. Right. So, so should you have a place that you, that you want to buy? Should you go out and look to buy a house before you start looking to sell your house to make sure that you can get something? Well, you don't want to sell your house and be homeless. Like you get all this money, but you can't. That's a tough thing. So you still 
don't have much of a shot to say, I'd like to purchase Main Street, but this is subject to me selling Milk Street. Right. You're never going to get that deal unless you're buying a house that has been sitting on the market for whatever reason. Whatever reason, usually they're asking too much money. Mm-hmm. Um, so the best scenario is to be able to say, I can sell my house and I have the flexibility of interim housing, living with family, I will go into a rental, or I have a summer place or a condo someplace, then you're taking the money out of your closing on your house, you've got that money in the bank, now you're one of those buyers out there that's saying, hey, I've got cash, 50% down payment, so maybe I don't even need a finance contingency. You know, the, the biggest thing in the last two years was, I, obviously most people waived home inspections, that would be the people that got the deals. Mm-hmm. And then most people had to say, I know I'm paying well over asking. The bank appraiser is probably not going to agree with me, but I have the cash into the deal to close anyway. That became the norm. Is that not as required? That's not 100% across the board now. You may get deals that say, okay, I didn't get 20 offers. I got five offers. This is the best offer, but I think... um, they're still the best qualified, but now you're also selling at a price that probably equates to what closed six months ago anyway. So the comparables are there, so the appraisal is probably going to work. Versus a year, year and a half ago, you'd sell something at nine that you would say, this thing was only eight and a quarter four months ago, and that's going to muck up the appraisal. You've mentioned home inspections a couple of times. Uh, I know nothing about real estate. I've never purchased a home. I've never been able to purchase a home. What, what, how does that work? If someone wants to sell their house, someone can come in and inspect it, and then that what drives up the price? Or? In, a, in a traditional real estate market, and for my entire career, typically a buyer would come in and say, I'll purchase your home, I'll offer you X dollars, but the deal is subject to me, the buyer, getting a home inspection, and it's subject to me, the buyer, getting a mortgage. Based on that home inspection, the buyer can say, you know what? So at this point, the buyer has put $1,000 down probably. And what, is, what, is the, what do they inspect? Like when the home inspectors come in, what are they doing? They're going to go from the basement up to the attic, and they're going to check all the systems. They're, gonna, they're really going to – and there's some great, great home inspectors. I'll give a shout-out to RJ Home Inspector, who's Methuen right near us. We've been friends with them for 35 years. They should be great. advertising with us. Great, great company. Um, super, super thorough. Now – they, you, they'll paint an accurate picture of the house. So, you know, if you're spending $450,000, you're not buying a perfect house. You're probably mm-hmm. buying a 50-year-old house that probably has some good features and some old features, but that's why you're paying that. Mm-hmm. So for a buyer to have a good understanding of saying, this is what I can expect moving forward. Are there things that really need to be addressed now? Are there um, things that I never would have known because I'm not trained to say, gee, that black stuff in the attic, oh, that is mold, right. like this, things like that. <clears throat> so, so if someone waves a home inspection, the buyer, it's really buyer beware at that point because yeah. you could have a crack in your foundation and not find out about it for five more years. Yes. And then you're screwed. You, you could find out about it in 60 days. Right. You can find out about it the first, first time it rains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's super scary, uh, but that has become uh, that had become the norm for the, the past two years of if there's 30 offers on the table and the seller is able to say five of these people are willing to take the risk. And so when half the time I'm working with sellers, half the time I'm working with buyers, you, I'm going to sit with my buyers and say, you know, we have to make a decision about calculated risk. So the big picture is if you have a budget, are you going to spend that money leaning more towards what's the best location I can get? Because you can never change location. But as it slides towards better location, condition may be something that says, I bought the ugliest house on the best street. Right. People will tell you, yeah, do that. But now that may be either an old roof or an old heating system, old windows. So we try to work with the buyers to say, okay, let's see how much information we can really figure out about this house. There'll be disclosures. There may be paperwork that says the roof was done in 2015. The heating system is this or the heating system's old. So you say, what's the worst case scenario? If we know X, Y, and Z is good, the heating system is 30 years old but still works, is that a $10,000 problem if it comes up? Okay, if that's the worst case scenario, can you roll those dice? Is right. that, so well, you could even ask the, 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 the seller, can you come down 10000 if I have to fix that? Uh, 
in a normal market. <laughs> yes. Not now, though. In the last two years, the seller has held all the cards, usually. And it's, it's, a, it's a scary situation. It's a scary situation for the younger buyers. You, you could have a 50-year-old buyer that's moved three times. And they say, yeah, I replaced the heating system. Right. Yeah. You know, there, there are things that you say, oh, my God, there's mold in the attic. Well, I mean, that's a finite, fixable thing. It's, it's a couple thousand dollars. And right. in the big picture, if you're trying to buy a $900,000 house and you've lost out on 15 other homes... They do get a little crazed, and they and their confidence level is: Am I willing to take the risk? Right. And it's scary. And, and you know, where is the brokers there trying to say, "We're going to help you make this decision"? But at the end of the day, it's not my money that's going to buy the new boiler. If right, it right. didn't work out, are we comfortable with this? Are we not? And and maybe there, there's certainly a lot of buyers that were in the market for six months and then they just tap out. They right. they're burnt out. They they'd go to an open house. There'd be a hundred people at the open house, and you'd be like, oh. We only have a few minutes left. Do you see a lot of flipping? I, I know by, in the 80s and the 90s, that was really big, flipping houses. You see all these guys on TV. We can teach you how to make a million dollars in five days. Is, 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 that, is that gone now? Because I don't see those things anymore. Or is that still kind of happening? It's still kind of happening. It, it really works if you're a buyer that can really follow the auctions. And that's where you're going to get values. And then you see a lot of these companies that are, we buy ugly houses, or not to na- name a name, but... Right. Unfortunately, well, it's a great name, right? Because it's a great name, but unfortunately, you know, you don't want to see people to say, "Gee, I called someone, and because I didn't know any better, and I thought I saved a commission, they offered me one hundred eighty thousand dollars for my house because it needed this, this, and this." But even needing all those things, maybe that house was worth three forty. Right. So I've seen scenarios where you go, like, you know, please don't be in the business of just taking advantage of people that don't know better. So, yes, there are flips. There's a lot of TV shows that make everyone think it's easy to flip. Right. So there's a lot of flippers out there saying, I have access to money and find me a flip. Yeah, not easy for me to find someone to flip on the open market, but easier for people to say, I've got some money. Let me go to these auctions. But at an auction, you've got to look and say, I hope I, I, hope I see everything I see. And be you've that. really got to be an inside. You've got to be like an inside real estate person to be able to do something like that. You've got to right? be in that business. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what are your recommendations? We've got about three minutes left. What are your recommendations? If someone's looking to buy a house for the first time right now, yep. what are your recommendations for them as far as location, as far as what kind of property they should be buying? Uh, single families versus you know, multifamilies? I mean, multifamily is a, a, a brilliant choice if you can find something in a neighborhood that you'd want to live in and then let the other tenant pay the majority of your mortgage, and then that's something you hold on to moving forward. You don't sell that thing. You hold on to that forever. If I could go back in time and not buy toys and buy Maltese, oh, hey, right. I'd be right. too busy to sit and talk to you right now. Where do you own? Where do you own? You, you must own your own home, right? Where, I where live in North you? Andover. So you're in North Andover. Do you own, like, an uh, investment property? Uh, no. You know, it's funny. My mom and I both... Um, I think we're both much, we, we have a clear understanding we're much better at doing what we do and we're not good landlords. If okay. someone called me and said my toilet is broken and they're calling me at 11 o'clock, that would drive me crazy and right. I'd want to kill them. But right. I can sell more homes and we stay in our lane. We, we do what we do. We, like, we do it well and we just do, try to do more of that. Matt McLennan from McLennan Real Estate, Century 21. Do you have anything else you want to leave our, our audience with? Any kind of uh, advice or anything as far as real estate? If you're a seller, if you're a buyer... Uh, if you're a seller, shine up that product. You have to shine it up more and more than you did a year or two ago. You know, work with people that are really um, grounded in that community. Avoid the people that will say, I'll do something dirt cheap because typically they suck at doing it. And that's it. That's pretty much work it. Work with someone you know and like. All right, Matt McLennan, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you coming in. It's much better for me to have you here in the studio and look at you while we're having the conversation rather than struggling through Zoom, sure. so thanks for coming in. Um, and by the way, thanks for supporting the Valley Patriot and, and, and our, our drive for scholarships for kids. Uh, every year when we do our bash, McLennan always kicks in something and usually says, please don't thank me on Facebook, so that's why I'm thanking you because you do it for the right reasons. Uh, thank you, Chrissy. You can roll up uh, Melvin Taylor. I uh, appreciate uh, the fine, fine work that you do here every week, Chrissy, and especially for, uh, for bringing Murphy with you because we love Murphy. Uh, I want to thank McLennan Real Estate Century 21 on Broadway in Methuen, and you guys are also in Bradford. Yep. Uh, AFC Urgent Care, Lisa Williams, we love her. We're still trying to get her a, a billboard. You know we can get Lisa Williams a billboard? 
somewhere like between Lawrence and in the Andover area because they're looking. Maybe you could help us out with sure. that. Sure. All right. Uh, Marsan and Sun Construction. We love Ronnie Marsan. EIS Investigation and Gun Training. Morelli's Deli, where I'm going to get my super hot sausages today right after the show. Uh, Tomo and Shaken Seafood. Clear Path for Veterans New England. <sighs> This, this list is getting longer and longer. But it's a good thing. It is a good thing. You'll be ready to buy a house. All right, well, Come with any, on. With any luck, if we get more sponsors. Sullivan Real Estate, Lazy River Products, Cannabis in Drake. And I'm actually going to be going there tomorrow. I keep promising, but I am doing it tomorrow. And Pleasant Valley Landscaping, Dave Id Consoli, says that they are taking on new jobs. They're not doing any uh, lawn mowing, but they're doing everything else. And it sounds like Melvin Taylor says we got to go home. Did you say that? Yeah. So go home already. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.